with the release of Sword and Shield on the 15th of November, I've jumped onto my sketch pad, put together three new designs for you to represent your Team Starter, Team Skull Bunny, Rookie Gang, or Team Sobel. Hop over to the Teespring store now. You can grab a 10% discount with the discount code STARTER. Hi friends and welcome back to another episode of our VGC 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and today we're going to be continuing on our Battle Series with this brand new team. As you can see on your screen in front of you right now, as always, the team is down in the description below. There is a link over to the team because this team belongs to Yuki Zaninovic, who played in the World Championships, got through day one and managed to get to day two with this build. So we had a request through on my Instagram actually from Zach. So big shout out to Zach for asking if we can play this team going into this week and uh, here we go Zach we're gonna give it a go but uh, very interesting build we've got the Mega Gengar the Xerneas Groudon as a restricted core we've got actually got Coma All which is a Pokemon that we don't generally see too often in this format but it did have a little spike in usage pre-world so interesting Pokemon to try out Crobat and the Amoongus so um three poison types on the team I don't know how we're gonna cope well against Psychic Spam so hopefully we don't come up against any blatantly what's gonna happen though um, but it, it seems like a really nice team. You've got the trapping element with the Gengar. You've also got the, the boosting with the Xerneas, the standard stuff there, the Groudon. And then also the boosting element of the team with the Coma All. Crobat's really good at shutting down opposing, boosting things with Haze, uh, Tailwind. And uh, just generally can't be faked out and helps set up things around the team. So quite nice. And then with the redirection with the Amoongus. Quite self-explanatory here. Once we get things set up, we want the Amoongus next to it so we can redirect any threats and stuff from there so i'm um, going to be exciting to play this team i'm looking forward to it on another note as well before i forget coming into this so there was a little trailer promo spam before the video it's not really spam because i drew those designs and i put them together and i think they're really nice but my t-shirt did arrive and we are team score bunny for the win so it's a super nice tee obviously if you want to grab yourself one whichever kind of team you want to represent um actually why am i why am i hiding it we need to get this tee out uh, if you want to get one the links to the teespring uh in in the description as always uh, there is a, a promo code for 10 percent off at the minute so if you put the the promo code starter in when you're over there at checkout you'll get 10 percent off your order Win-win. So, if you do grab one, though, make sure to drop me a message on Twitter or Instagram. Just let me know you've got it. Send me a pic. I would love to see it and tweet it out, Instagram it out to the world. So, um, without further ado, I guess, let's jump into it. So, it's going to be a lot of fun. This is also going to be the last week in the Ultra Series on the channel. I'm going to take a bit of a break before Sword and Shield comes in. We'll still have content on the channel, so don't worry about that. But we're not going to be playing any ultra series after this week so this friday coming it will be the last time i will be doing this uh, battle series which is very sad because it's been something that we started on the channel when we first began like three years ago and we've been doing it solidly since and it's been an incredible ride on the ds i'm excited to move over to the switch but um yeah it's just it's gonna be sad i'm gonna be sad to say goodbye to the ds i, I really am uh, it feels like that is just where pokemon always belongs but Found a new home now. It's going to be kick ass on the Switch. It's going to be amazing. All the stuff that we've seen so far from this game is incredible. I cannot wait to get my hands on it. Um, we'll still have the Flinch Squad circuit matches through the weeks. Uh, obviously, they'll be on the DS until we uh, we finish that circuit and move on to Sword and Shield. But this Friday will be the last one. So make the most of this week, and I will definitely be doing the same. We've got a first opponent the episode with Claudio, and uh, we'll hop straight into team preview. So Claudio playing a team of Xerneas, Kyogre, Metagross, Tornadus, Incineroar, and Amoongus. So if you guys did ever watch the channel first when we started the Ultra Series, this was a team I actually made at the very beginning of the Ultra Series, exact same six. So whether it's the same team or not, I don't know. There have been variants of players that have kind of taken this on and used it throughout the season but uh, I am very familiar with it so um Groudon is going to be incredibly good for us uh, we need to watch out for the Tornadus especially with the um the, the pranks the taunt there and um just shutting down our Crobat's ability I'm just going to try and see if I can find the team pace because I'm not massively familiar with the team so knowing what we've got ah we've got the Flyonium Z on it so um okay what do we want to do we need Groudon um Gengar's not bad here to be honest 
to do some trapping. We need to be a bit careful around the, the tornadoes for sure. Um, but we could go Gengar. And then, hmm, do we want to go Groudon? Hmm. If we go Groudon, Xerneas, and then we'll go Amoongus, because I want a sponge. I want a sponge! I know, I want a sponge to come in to switch in when Kyogre hits the field because undoubtedly we're going to be in that bold position where Kyogre probably will hit the field at some point. Groudon's out and we need a good switch in and uh, Amoongus fills that job perfectly and it also helps against um, Xerneas as well if we do see it through Sinnoh. We're going to see Incineroar and Tornadus come out so I've got that handy, handy Intimidate onto our Groudon. We'll probably see it pivot out here. It's probably not going to uh, fake out, I'd imagine. We'll probably see it pivot out and then maybe the tailwind uh, set up from the tornadoes. We do need to be careful around the flying EMZ on the tornadoes. That's definitely something we need to worry about. But I think here for my opponent, they're probably more, <sighs> more worried about getting the tailwind up turn one. Um, so we could make a revolve. And we can sludge bomb, tornadoes, and oh, we got eruption. Mm. Tasty, tasty, tasty. Do we erupt? Do we go for the eruption? I'm kind of tempted to just eruption. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. We're gonna lock into eruption. We're gonna try and take this tornadoes down. Um, and once we can do that, then we can really fully utilize our Gengar. As long as the, to the, the Incineroar does what we expect it to do, I, I kind of, I am hoping that it doesn't just attack attack Gengar. It could be Zemu. We could lose it for sure, but we'll see. I would say Tailwind and then u turn. That would be my best guess. Fake out? Huh. Ooh, okay, there's a Tailwind. Well, I don't mind that too much either. The fake out there. Um, because it, it, it kind of traps the Incineroar in and we get some decent damage onto the Tornadoes and we can um, totally burn uh, these Tailwind turns as well for my opponent. Now we've got to watch out this next turn, I think, for the Tornadus going for a potential Z-move. Uh, we could just double protect and just keep this Tornadus and Incineroar trapped on the field. And we'll stall out a turn of Tailwind. And we'll see what the Tornadus throws out. So you've got to remember as well, if the Tornadus goes for a Hurricane, it's not 100% accurate with the rain not being up. Um, and it might... I doubt it protects. There's no way. Like, Tornadus very rarely carries protect. This is a QR code team though, so you've got to think how old is it as well. That's the other question. Let's see what they do. Come on, Claudio. Let's get a move on. Right, here we go. Gengar, protect. Sprout on, protect. Tornado C move. Taunt. Ha. Huh? That's interesting. The other reason why it's good to protect here as well, the poison will tick down and activate a berry if it's got one or not. And it ain't got a berry, so to me it would indicate that it's probably <laughs> probably going to have um, a Z move. Now what I could do is, I could bring in Amoongus here. Um, Cinero's going to go on before Groudon, likely. The only reason I bring in Amoongus here is because um, if it does go for the Z-move into the Gengar, then... Hmm. Oh, I'm going to stay in, actually. If we lose Gengar, we lose Gengar. No, 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 no. Let's not do that. We've not got much time. Let's switch into Amoongus. And let's switch Groudon out to... Xerneas, can we lock it in? We're going to do it. Pull a double switch. We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll... Yeah. Uh, I just like to see the, the, the tornadoes go down, but I'm just too worried about the Z move, and I definitely think that's what the tornadoes has got, and I feel like this is the turn it goes for it. Now, knowing that we've just protected, we can get rid of that, that Gengar. We've got the Sash on the Moongus, this is the reason why. It goes for a blind hurricane. What's the crowd on this thing? Huh. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> there we go. That's what you're waiting for. The Z move is on the Incineroar. Alright. Um, if it's into, uh, <coughs> okay, it's into, um, Amoongus. This is fine though, because, 
like the whole time we're just burning we've actually got a, a great opportunity to set up um geomancy here and go for a redirection rage powder and get a geo up we'll do that um yeah so the tornadoes does anything here um then It'll go down to the poison the next turn, and the tailwind ends this turn, so it's perfect timing. It's not that they're not going to get any more speed control up. And hopefully, if we see a taunt and an attack from the incineral, we're 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 in a good spot. Especially if we can get a Gengar back on the field if Amoongus does go down. And then if they do bring in their own Xerneas to set up, then we've got all the the kind of I guess supplies arsenal whatever you want to call it to get rid of it before it can do anything so here's amoongus going for that cheeky old rage powder going to pull in those attacks from tornadoes i'd avoid oh <laughs> i shouldn't <yeah. laughs> this is what you get for using her again this is like guarantee i'm only laughing because this happens to me every time i'm out of the rain with tornadoes and i use it at, like if you you guys know you guys know it always misses um Okay, so we get the Geomancy up, which is super nice. I'm not gonna bring I'm not gonna bring Groudon in right now because we wanna wait till the Kyogre hits the field to bring it in. Tornadus will go down to poison, that poison coming in super handy. One sludge bomb does the job, so Tornadus going down, the tailwind will end and um I'd imagine my opponent might bring in the Kyogre here. But we'll bring in Gengar, regardless. That is the Xerneas. The Zonia. Okay. Um. Hmm. Well. What do we do? Do we double tap the Incineroar? Or do we Sludge Bomb Dazzle it? I think Sludge Bomb and Dazzling Gleam is probably the better call. It does allow my opponent the opportunity to get their Geomancy up, but I think... Okay, well, we get a decent chunk of damage onto them anyway. Well, alright. Yeah, that's fine. And it'll be the Kyogre, the last Pokemon. I just thought there, maybe the Xerneas might protect. But it is going for the Geo. It'll come down to whose Xerneas is faster. What, what's that? What is our Xerneas? Is... Okay, so we're pretty fast, but we're modest. Okay. Not very defensively, though. So if we lose the speed tie, we could go down to a, a moon blast. Um, but we do have Groudon in the back as well, so let's see what Groudon is doing. Okay. Hmm. Special Groudon, though. Not the best against Kyogre. On all honesty, but, um, it's still, it's still fine. We've got three Pokemon. We can, we can do some stuff. And are we switching... Do we switch in Groudon now and just go for another Dazzle? That could be a good option. Hmm. We keep Gengar. Yeah, let's do that. Let's switch in to Groudon and go for a Dazzle. Because the Dazzle will get the Xerneas, which is the main thing I'm worried about at the minute. And it'll do a nice chunk of damage to Kyogre as well. So we'll go for that. We'll preserve Gengar. Because Gengar should take a Sludge Bomb. Um, sorry, a Moonblast. It should do. Yeah, it's nice and bulky, this Gengar, so it should take at least a plus two Moonblast, 100%. So if we can get rid of the Kyogre, then we can uh, we can close this one up. So get the crowd on in, get the sun up on the field, we'll see the Moonblast come out, it does outspeed us, hopefully we can survive it, come on, come on Xerneas. Oh, it just takes it, it takes it, we get a special attack drop, but still should be enough to get the opposing Xerneas, which it is. <laughs> okay, there's the ice beam. Predicting the switch. Very nice. Very nice play for my opponent. But unfortunately, I feel like it's going to be a little bit too tough for Kyogre to come back in this one. And we are going to be able to wrap things up with the restricted of the team, the Xenis and the Groudon. So, very good game to my first opponent in the episode. Nice one for us to kick off with today as well. So, um, yeah. It's always tricky, I think, in these matches where you don't know where the Z-move is, and it could be on a number of different Pokemon in the team. You kind of go down the route where you make the assumption. It's normally on the Tornado, so we'll stick with that. But, you know, on those teams as well, it makes sense to have it on the Incineroar because Trick Room is 
is super problematic for those teams sometimes, especially if you can't bring new Moongus to a certain match. Anyway, we will continue. Uh, we'll hop over to our other screen. We can take a look at our score at the minute. It's a 1669. It's a nice, nice round number that we've got there for us right now. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our next opponent. And um, yeah, I'm just going to think of things to chat about right now uh, that we can expect in the next few weeks from the channel, especially when Sword and Shield comes out. So when Sword and Shield comes out, I am planning on doing a playthrough. As soon as it comes out, I, I've got time off work, which is great. So it means I will be doing lots of streams with uh, Sword and Shield and uh, my streaming schedule. I'll make sure to post that on Twitter, on Instagram. Uh, wherever I can I'll make sure you guys are aware of it as well so you can come by the stream it would be great to hang out with as many of you as possible and uh, so we'll be doing that uh, we'll be getting into doing competitive battles as soon as we can if showdowns up and running obviously like I've said before we'll make sure to get that booted up in place and until we can build a team and play online um, and do that I'll probably do an update video of the 2020 season rules to just reiterate everything because we should get an idea of the rules very shortly after Sword and Shield comes out, especially with the uh, the battle facilities online. Um, and then we're going to do a flurry of other stuff. So we'll have guides, uh, we'll have, uh, we'll, I'll find out about breeding stuff, so we'll do that. It'll all be good. Uh, we're not finding an opponent, but I'm excited. I'm super excited for Sword and Shield. Uh, let me know down in the comment section below, like, what are you most looking forward to with Sword and Shield? Or are you not looking forward to it at all? I've got to admit, and you will all know by now, I am super optimistic about most new things that we get in Pokemon. And uh, there's a lot of controversy at the minute about people being too positive about the game or maybe being over positive for a reason, but... Being on the channel for so long, I hope the majority of you know that this is just who I am. I like I I'm just saying what I think. Like I am so hyped for these games. I'm always super positive about anything new. Um But I'll straight away say if I, I don't like it when it comes out or not. I mean take the Cephalon for a perfect example of this. Ultra Sun Ultra Moon. The Cephalon gets um we've got Mogar. Awesome. It gets announced for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon and I'm behind it 100% love the design of it. It comes out and I think it's trash and I don't quite happily openly say that as well but never mind. So we got Mogar. Malcolm is a great player from Australia. It always makes really unique teams so we'll hop over to team preview see what he's got. It's really nice to be able to feature him in today's episode. Okay so we are going up against Alolan Raichu, Aerodactyl, Lopunny, Tapu Koko, Lunala and Xerneas. Man, uh, this just looks nasty, doesn't it? It's like the most super hyper offensive team you'll see with uh, Zernala tagged on the end here. So uh, lots of fast fake out that we can't really get around. Mm, trapping, I don't know if it's really the best way to go because of the psychic typing on the Raichu that really does cause us a lot of issues. I mean, the one thing hmm, could potentially do is maybe go Crobat um and try and get a tailwind up with grout on it's definitely an option uh but the psychic typing on this team make things very difficult for us i'm going to lead off with grout on crawback um hmm, i've definitely got to bring xerneas and i think maybe gengar is a, is a last port of call we just don't want to see any psych up sort of stuff this is going to be really this is going to be really tricky but we'll click in see how we get on good luck malcolm And we'll see how we can get on. Ah, oh, this feels like a really tough matchup. It really does. Just because everything's like like super speedy and like the Crobat and the Gengar will just like look staring down speed ties against a lot of the stuff on his team. Which makes it difficult. But well not that that's standing our way. We'll try our best to get around everything. We're gonna see a lovely pink, shiny Aerodactyl and uh, very nicely colour themed here with the uh, the low pony as well. Shiny. Matching a Crobat, kind of. I mean, we're more purple than pink, but we'll uh, we'll we'll go with it for this one. So, Brad, I'm gonna hit the field. Are we really too worried about what we're gonna do? Because we can't be faked out. It's just about whether the Aerodactyl wins the speed tie. And I mean, still, we can get a tailwind up, right? So we will 
If we can get a Tailwind up as well, we've got the Z-Move the next turn that we can potentially throw into Lop Honey. Do we protect Groudon though, or do we just attack and go for like an Eruption? Just to get damage on the Aerodactyl, really, that's the main thing that I'd like to get damage. It's not going to be super effective, but um, yeah, let's do it. I mean, I'm not really too worried, honestly, by whatever these two are doing, so we'll see. Lop Honey might just fake out the Groudon. So, Lopunny, go to Mega Evolve. Just go straight for a return. So, it's going to try and chip us to get the speed tie. Plus Tailwind. Okay. Oh, we get a free eruption. So, that'll say goodnight to the bunny. And it'll do some nice damage to the Aerodactyl as well. So, we match the Tailwinds, which is good. Um, eruption. Ooh, I'd be interested to see how much it does to Aerodactyl. Damn, it does so much damage to Aerodactyl. Man, okay. Well, we, we have a bit of a speed time with the Aerodactyl as well, which is not ideal. Uh, I'm just going to check the EV. No, we don't. We lose the speed time because we're not max speed. Crawback. But it's fine. Um, uh, so we're probably going to lose Crawback here to a, a Rock Slide, I would imagine. The problem is the Xerneas, which is really annoying. I mean, we could go for a taunt into a trying taunt. You know, if we go for rock slide, they could miss 100%. Um, and we can go for another eruption, I think. And that should get rid of the Aerodactyl. Rock slide. It doesn't miss, but... Okay. Mm, I'm going to see the Geo now. Geo, Geo, Geo. This is the problem with not having a fast crawlback. Like, I would always... If I'm building my team, I always would prefer... Like, it doesn't matter about the bulk. Um... I personally don't think. I think like it's more important to make sure that uh, you're just at least matching uh, the the opposing like 130. So you've got that speed tie and you use it at the very worst case scenario. But maybe that's not how the team was meant to be operated. So I can't really question it without speaking to Yuki. And I haven't seen the full team report yet. So the team report will be linked down below as well. So you can check that out if you'd like to. Um. Okay, so Zerny's got its boost up. Um, Lunala's going to come in 100%. 100%. Let's get Gengar into the field. Uh, the side cuff is real, isn't it? It's actually Tapu Koko. Huh. Okay. Mm. Wow. Well, well, well. Um, I didn't expect that. So... If we can get rid of this Tapa de Coco, Gengar's in a, a very happy place. Um, now, if we use Groudon, like I think Groudon can take a Moonblast from this range. It's just whether or not you attack with Coco here. I'm just going to go for the Earth Power and I'm going to protect Gengar, Mega Vault. Because if we can get the Coco here, I think we can close this one out. Let's see. Gengar protect. Coco attack. Moonblast. Yeah. Can we survive? This is a big thing. Come on, Groudon, take it. Take it like a man! You took it! Psycho! Oh, no way! Oh, what? What is going on? I don't think this takes you down now. Oh, it just survives. This is the worst. This is the worst. Hmm. Did not expect that. Okay, so Coco it's got Protect, it's got Psycho, it's gonna have Dazzle, and it's gonna have Thunderbolt. And it's gonna absolutely obliterate our Gengar right now. We shouldn't have protected. It was like the worst play. It was the worst play we could have done. Ah. Can we get a double Protect off? And go for another Earth Power into Coco? Let's try it. I think, like, otherwise, we were, I think we're going to lose anyway now. Yeah. Because Electro Web, we probably could have taken this. Oh, it's Electro Ball. Ha. Huh. No, we, we don't. We don't do that. Oh, but it's Life Orb. Hmm. No, there's no way. We needed to use that last turn. It's a Sludge Bomb in Earth Power. Because now it comes down to our poor, poor Xerneas by itself. If 
funny though, if we had like a Moongus here, we could have maybe done it. Hmm. Malcolm pulling out all the text. No, I wouldn't expect that anything anything less, honestly. Uh we can't we can't do anything. We'll try the geo, but we'll never get it. We'll never get it. Moonblast. Moonblast and Electro Ball. Dang. Dang, dang, dang. I'll have to drop them a little message to say good game. Um, but yeah, that was a good game. I mean, like, it's those kind of situations. That, <laughs> like, what do you do against that? I'd love a best of three in that against that team because then you know, at least, this is why it's so perfect for a best of one ladder though, isn't it? It's great because it's just like unbelievable. But those moments are absolutely perfect when they do happen. So massive props to Malcolm. Good game there. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. It has been a lot of fun. We kicked off with the uh, the Zerndon team. And hopefully we can get to feature a lot of the, the different elements of the team as we go through this week. We've got the Coma all that we haven't really featured today. And uh, I don't think we've seen the best of Crobat either. It has got the Flying MZ on it. So I think if we can make use of that going forward that'll be uh, a lot of fun so uh, we'll wrap it up there my friends have a fantastic day whatever you're up to morning day noon or night and uh, we'll see you for another episode tomorrow so until then take care and bye bye